Welcome to my lecture online. Not only does the Earth have the perfect atmosphere, have the right constituents and the right percentages, there's one additional component in the atmosphere, in a specific layer of our atmosphere, that is absolutely essential to life. Without it, we probably would not be alive. What is that essential layer? It's called the ozone layer and it exists in the stratosphere. Now, there's four layers to our atmosphere. We have the troposphere, which is a layer that's about six to 10 miles up from the surface, where we live, where all the weather occurs and all that. But above that, we have a layer called the stratosphere. Then we have the mesosphere, and then we have the ionosphere, also known as the thermosphere, because that's where a lot of energy is absorbed from space and makes that layer extremely warm, extremely hot with temperatures reaching probably as much as a thousand degrees. Well, why is that? Well, the universe is a very dangerous place and it has gamma rays and x-rays racing throughout the universe in all directions, of course, that also then imparts onto the Earth. And if those x-rays and gamma rays could reach the surface of the Earth, it would destroy all life on Earth. But luckily, our atmosphere contains nitrogen and oxygen molecules. Now, these are diatomic molecules, meaning they have two atoms to a single molecule, and in the case of nitrogen, they form a triple bond, and in case of oxygen, they form a double bond. With a double bond, that means that four electrons are shared, and here in this case, six electrons are shared in such a way that they form fairly strong bonds. Now what they do in the upper regions of the atmosphere, when x-rays and gamma rays come down, notice that those rays and essentially they're just accumulation of what we call photons, small little energetic particles called gamma particles or x-ray particles. They come down into the atmosphere, they meet up with these molecules and the energy of those small little photons of gamma rays and x-rays hit the bonds, break the bonds apart and that absorbs the energy of those x-rays. Now or gamma rays and then the individual atoms will then fly away with a lot of speed because they've now gained all that energy but by doing so they've absorbed those very dangerous x-rays and gamma rays and because the particles are moving around at very high speeds it causes this region of the atmosphere to be at very high temperature. But besides x-rays and gamma rays, which are all throughout space, there's also UV radiation. And one big source of UV radiation is our own sun. Our own sun puts out UV radiation, visible light, and infrared radiation. Now, we're not worried about the visible light and infrared. That's, that's nice. It warms us up. But the UV radiation, well, that can be quite dangerous. And UV ra radiation exists in three different types. Well, it's all UV radiation, but we broke them up into three regions in the electromagnetic spectrum because they do different things in our atmosphere and they do different things to our bodies. So we have what we call UVA, UVB, and UVC. UVC is much more energetic because they have much smaller wavelengths. UVA is a lot less energetic because they have much bigger wavelengths. And UVB is somewhere in between the two. Now, all three types come from the sun, but UVC radiation is kind of dangerous. Again, if we were pummeled by UVC radiation, it would actually literally destroy the skin on our bodies and would not be a pretty sight. So we would be very vulnerable being exposed to this. But UVC radiation has so much energy that the photons, just like X-rays and gamma rays, will come in hit the nitrogen and oxygen molecules and break up those bonds. UVC has enough energy to break the bonds and again, that causes that energy to be absorbed. Good for us, we don't have to be exposed to it. It doesn't make it down to the surface. What about UVB? Now UVB is not quite as energetic as UVC, but still plenty energetic to cause a significant amount of damage. If all the UVB radiation were, were able to get to the surface, just five minutes in the sun would cause severe sunburns. Luckily, we're protected. Not because of the nitrogen and the oxygen, because UVB does not have enough energy to break the bonds of the nitrogen and the oxygen, so it goes right through the nitrogen and oxygen, keeps going, but the ozone layer, and the ozone layer consists of O3 molecules, so this is basically three oxygens bonded together like this, and when UVB hits it, it breaks up that molecule, 
separates one of the oxygens from the other two and causes the energy to be absorbed. And it turns out that of all the UVB that hits the ozone layer, a very tiny fraction, about 1% or so, makes it through the ozone layer and reaches the surface of the Earth. And that very tiny percentage of UVB radiation that comes through is enough to cause sunburns. That's the part of the sunlight that gives you sunburns that you need to be protected from. And that's why we use uh, creams and, thing and things like that to protect us against sunburns. And so we're protecting ourselves of that for that very small percentage. Imagine that all of it were to come through, then no amount of sunscreen would help you. You'd have to be bathed in sunscreen or simply not go outside in order to be protected. So it's the ozone layer that is made up of very special O3 molecule. So essentially, we call that an O3 molecule. It has three atoms of oxygen combined together in a, in a molecule, and the ozone layer protects us from UVB radiation. Fantastic. Now UVA does make it all the way through because it doesn't have enough energy to break up the, U, the O3 molecules, but UVA is not as damaging as UVB. It doesn't really cause sunburns, maybe a little bit. It simply causes some damage to the skin over time, and over time it could result in perhaps getting skin cancer if you're exposed to UVA for long periods of time every day over a lifetime, it will cause wrinkling, it will cause degradation of the skin quality, and it might result into cancer. But again, we're not really that damaged by UVA, and it does get through the ozone layer. So again, you don't want excessive amount of sunlight, you want a little bit of sunlight on a daily basis, because that's healthy for you. And we are protected from all the various forms of electromagnetic radiation that could be severely harmful to it. To us. And again, because X-rays and gamma rays are stopped and UVC is stopped, the Earth needed something to stop UVB for life to exist. For us to be able to live on this Earth, UVB needs to be eliminated to a large extent, not completely, because it turns out that UVB radiation is what causes the skin to generate vitamin D, which is of course very vital for us, and we'll look a little bit more into that in another video. So a little bit needs to come through, but the vast majority need to be stopped for us to live on this earth. And imagine ozone does exactly that, allows just enough through so we can be healthy with vitamin D and not too much so we wouldn't be destroyed by the radiation effects of UVB. It's amazing. It's, again, the miracle of our existence, that ozone layer is just the right thing to protect us from just the right radiation. And that's why we're here.